Welcome back, Splunk Enthusiasts. This video is brought to you by Lame Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy, where we help you master the tools and techniques to become a Splunk Pro. In today's session, we're diving into the world of SPL, or Splunk Processing Language, to help you sharpen your skills and become a more powerful data investigator in Splunk. We'll be working with the BOTS version 3 dataset, Boss of the SOC, a realistic, hands-on data set full of cybersecurity challenges that's perfect for exploring real world scenarios and honing your search skills. In today's video, we're going to dive deep into one of the most powerful and flexible commands in the Splunk processing language, the eval command. Eval allows you to create custom fields, apply transformations, and add a whole new level of insight to your data analysis. We'll be using the BOTS v3 data set, and in this data set, we'll cover how to create new fields and enrich your data, ways to perform calculations and conditional checks, practical examples for detecting malicious activity. So whether you're just starting with SPL or looking to add new tools to your Splunk toolkit, this video will help you unlock the full potential of eval. Ready to turn data into actual insights? Let's jump right in. The eval command, we're going to talk about it. We're going to show how it works. We're going to add a little bit extra there. We're going to throw the table there so it's a little easier to find our information. But our first command is we're going to create a field for high or low bytes transferred. So we're going to go into our always remember, do all time, because we're using the bots data and it's multiple. It goes back a few years in order to be able to get that data. X equals bots v3. And we're going to do eval byte category we're going to make a field called if eva byte category this doesn't exist but after we're on the query it will and then we'll use if bytes greater than 1 million we'll say hi otherwise we'll say low so we're doing two commands here we're doing an eval and an if statement and if we run that we're going to do a table so we're going to say bytes and byte category. And when we do that and run this, we can see two things from here. One, filter, and if the thing is empty, it'll default out to our else statement here. We can use the eval command to create new fields and we're going to do that. This one will be more mathematical. We're going to go response time and seconds equals response time divided by a thousand. What we get is what if our response time is in milliseconds? We want to get that to seconds if we run that we can now do a table and we'll write we're going to make this run on the stream dns stream dns command just so it's faster for us in this demo purposes we're going to put response time and response time sec as we run that we'll see something interesting when we see this, it kind of makes it look like there was a, uh, that it's kind of a long time. In reality, only one of these is really long. The rest of these are relatively short. These are t long. These are small. These are just in milliseconds. And it allows us to take a value and put it into a different type of field. So we can ch change this response time. We could do this for megabytes and gigabytes as well. We can also make a field for successful logins. One of the reasons I'm going to give an example here is when you sort do uh, sort stuff, 
computers work faster on numbers than they do on strings or words. And so here we've got a login status and we're going to make it a Boolean value. Status right now is a string and this is going to make it into a Boolean, which would allow us to actually do other computations later faster. And that might be a reason why you could you might want to change a field into a Boolean or something like that. So we'll go status, login status. In this situation, all of these are coming back as numbers. Take action login out. We might see some statuses with actual There we go, we saw success. And now we can see success with a one and the other. So just be aware that if you're if you're not careful, you could, can mislabel things this route. This It's out of the scope of this tutorial, but there's a difference between an if and a case. I'm a bigger fan of case. If has a little bit more fail safe. Case, you have to actually call the thing out. Here with if, it doesn't match, so it gives it a zero. So just be aware of that. We can concatenate fields. So we're going to do eval connection equals the source IP period, which is concatenate. We're going to put this in between, and then we're going to do another concatenate them together and so then we're going to go table source ip best ip and connection when we put those there we'll see it we kind of spruce up this field so we've got this one going to this one and put a little arrow in there we can classify events by their http status code so for example in stream HTTP logs. These are web logs. You're going to get status codes for your connections. So we're going to make a status category and we're going to make it equal to, and here we're going to use a case statement. Case status is greater than or equal to 200 and status is less than 300. So we're going to get all the 200 codes. We're going to call that a success. We'll do our next statement, status is greater than or equal to 400, and status is less than 500. We're going to call that client error, and status greater than 500. Going to call that a server error and right now if i just closed off my case statement we didn't cover anything from 300 to 400 or high level or lower than 200 they just wouldn't have a status category but if we go one equals one that's kind of like doing an else statement basically says everything else will become another so now we'll do a table we'll do a status and a status category We can see it giving this category to these fields. We can do the average bytes per second. So we're going to do a stream SMTP. We're going to do eval bytes per second equals the bytes divided by the duration. And so the, the durations in seconds, we've got the amount of bytes, and we're gonna make a new field of how many bytes are going across per second on this SMTP. And we'll run that. And we can see we did the math 
and took this number divided, I bet that's what you're going to get. Anyway, so there's the math. We can do kind of things bytes per second. What if we have email addresses? We can split out their names. So we're going to do eval domain equals mv index split email basically what we're doing is we're going to make a multi-value field from an email where we split on the word at and it's basically going to take things on the left hand and the right hand side and split them we can see those results probably should have done a table here this is why I'm doing tables, otherwise I have to come down here and find it. But we're going to go domain and we'll do email. And we can see that what we end up doing here is because we took the, the index one here, we're only grabbing index one. This would be index zero. This would be index one. But we basically parsed out this we split it into two fields and we took the second piece and just remember in math in computers we we start with the number zero when we count and so we grab frothly and so we're basically pulling off the domains off email addresses if we reverse this to zero let's do this we'll put them both eval username equals mv index split email at. This goes to a one. We run that. That was to put the uh, username in there. And so you can see username was the zero index. It, it broke it up. Index first, second. And so if we want, and it split them up. So we can split on fields like that. We can create a field for the day of the week. So we're going to come in here and we're going to do eval day of week equals striff time. We're going to pass the time field in there and then we're going to use this percent a command. There's a whole thing on striff time. You can look it up in all the commands, but this a is for day of the week. So we write in table, time, day of week. And let's do a head 100 because everything's going to fall under this. And so there's the day of the week. It's pulling it out based off of timestamp. Just here where I don't mess up. I looked here real quick and saw 820 and 920. That is a month and one day apart so don't think it's a glitch it's 8 20 and 9 all right we can flag suspicious user agents or in this case we're going to go look for the google bot so we'll go source type equals access Combined, and then we're going to go eval suspicious user agent equals case user agent like sent Google. Bot percent. Yes, one equals one. No. And so we explain this out. We're using, we're making a new field, suspicious user agent. We're using the case statement. If the user agent is like, which allows us to use wildcards, but funny enough, in like statements, you use a percentage sign, not the actual asterisk. 
and it's case sensitive. So if I write lowercase g, they aren't going to match. And I say if it is, yes, otherwise, no. Go ahead and run that. Make sure I have balance quotes, which my balance quotes there. And again, we need to put table in there. Table, user agent, suspicious user agent. So now, because we don't want to go look all these up, let's go user agent equals Google bot. We can see that matches. If I do a lowercase though, unfortunately, no matches. That leads me to my next one, since we want to make sure we don't have case sensitivity issues. I'm going to do eval lower user agent equals the lower command. Now we can do table user agent and lower user agent. We do that. We can see that it lowercased everything. We also have it yell at us by doing upper. When you got case sensitivity issues, the best thing to do is make sure that you put both through, my preference is lower, put both sides through a lower case, compare them together. Then you don't have to worry about the fact that an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter aren't actually equal to each other. Thanks for tuning in to Lame Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. If you found today's video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss out on the latest tips, tools, and tutorials to boost your log analysis skills. Want to take it a step further? Become a member to support the channel and gain exclusive early access to videos and exclusive focus training. Join us on Discord where we dive even deeper, share insights, and tackle questions together. Until next time from Lame Creations, where we help you go from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.